Hi guys, uh, welcome to this webinar from Telric India. Uh, we have been targeting a series of webinars almost every Thursday. This is targeted towards India and the APAC region, so whoever wants to attend this, they can attend. We normally uh, talk about Telric technologies and also generic, uh, you know, .NET technologies here, uh, across platform, you know, everything. Today webinar is all about talking, uh, you know, how to build Android and iOS applications with Visual Studio. So don't worry if you are, uh, you know, going to miss this, uh, uh, what do you call the webinar. Uh, this webinar will be recorded as you can see. Today's session will be recorded and available 24-7 on TellericHelper.net. That's the place where we go back and then uh, uh, write our recap. So pretty much uh, without much further ado, let's get started. So this is me. Somebody was asking who is the speaker. So uh, my name is Lohit Gaurgare Nagraj, or you can just call me Lohit. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP in the area of uh, ASP.NET and IS. I'm also an MCP. Uh, I work as senior customer advocate, or in uh, general layman terms, I'm I work as developer evangelist. I evangelize uh, pretty much most of the technologies that we have here in uh, Telerik, and then I take care of you know uh, most of the uh, business that happen in uh, South uh, South India for our uh, uh, tools. My email, official email is lohit.nagraj at telerik.com. I'm available at Twitter. This is my Twitter handle. Uh, this is my personal blog, kashyapas.com. And I also blog at tellerikhelper.net. You may want to bookmark tellerikhelper.net because um, uh, the week, myself, my colleague, Dhananjay Kumar, and then uh, you know my country head, uh, Abhishek Kant, we three keep writing uh, articles on Telerik-related uh, stuff here. Also, not to mention, miss Telerik.com, uh, one place uh, where you would go and then find out all about the products that we manufacture or we develop. Uh, you know, we, we are a uh, controls plus, uh, we are in all the SDLC, like, you know, lifecycle management. Uh, we have uh, tools for project management. We have tools for construction, like any .NET technology you, you name, we have controls out of the box. And we also there in testing space. So today, we're going to be talking about this. You know, what are we talking today? Uh, pretty much, you know, pictorially, I put uh, a neat little, you know, small, small images or, you know, what you call the logos here. So the first logo that you see is obviously, you know, Visual Studio. So using Visual Studio, how do we develop uh, products for Android and iOS? So that's the uh, whole webinar today. We're going to be showcasing some of the things that we have done. Our, uh, as Telerik, we have a product, so we're going to be talking about that which lets you create Android and iOS applications sitting right inside Visual Studio. You do not have to go out of Visual Studio. Uh, you've been, maybe you are a day in and day out, you have been working with Visual Studio, maybe in a web application or in a console application, uh, you know, using ASP.NET or WPF or uh, Windows. Now suddenly you are asked to create, uh, you know, uh, Android or iOS applications and you don't have to go outside of Visual Studio, so I'll show you how to do that. So, no more slide deck. We're gonna straight jump. Uh, you know, we're gonna jump straight into the demos. Uh, that's why I said, let's see the action first. You know, I want you to believe that, yeah, this is possible. And then we're gonna talk about what are the uh, different pieces uh, of this particular, uh, you know, uh, technology. What I what are the things that make up this particular? What is the puzzle? You know, if this is looking like a puzzle for you. I'm going to talk about the pieces that make up this puzzle later. So now, without much further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my Visual Studio. So all you need to do is, uh, in the interest of the time, I already created the project, but I'm going to go through, uh, you know, uh, one by one. So I'll tell you what is the pro technology behind this, but uh, let's see the demo first. So we have something called as Icenium. It's an extension for Visual Studio. Uh, currently, it's in beta stage, and it supports Visual Studio 2012. Once you install this extension, which is available from Visual Studio Gallery, uh, what, you, what it allows you to do is when you come in and say new project, you just select Icenium template, and then here you can see, like, you know, we give you four different types of, uh, you know, mobile application templates. So I give you a blank template. Uh, when it's blank, there's nothing. You can start putting in any mobile related uh, uh, you know libraries like jQuery mobile or Kendo UI mobile or anything and then start uh, uh, you know developing or we make it easy for you you can pretty much come back here and say hey you know what I want to create a jQuery mobile uh, related project you know my mobile app that I'm going to create it's based on jQuery mobile fine 
what we do is if you select jQuery mobile and then click OK, we're going to go ahead, package everything for you and then set up a structure wherein you will have an index.html, then you'll have jQuery mobile uh, CSS, jQuery mobile JavaScript and then of course it relies on jQuery so we'll have jQuery also there. Kendo UI DataViz is basically Kendo UI is a flagship product from Telerik, which is uh, all about HTML5 and then cross-browser, uh, you know, uh, HTML5-powered client-side UI framework. It also has data visualization, which is all about doing the graph, charts, and everything, which supports both mobile as well as uh, desktop browser. So you write once, it can run in both the places. Kendo UI Mobile is set of mobile controls from Kendo UI library, which do adaptive rendering. So I'm going to showcase that to you in a moment. For now, what I'm going to do is assume that I have selected uh, jQuery Mobile as the uh, project template and then I have clicked OK. Let's assume that's been done already. So this is what you get now. If you look at my uh, screen now, on the right hand side, I have the Solution Explorer. I just gave some name. Uh, I name it as uh, index dot, uh, sorry, mobile project one, just, just to, for the demo's sake. And this is what you get. You see here, jQuery Mobile is automatically included, and then there is a JavaScript file which is jQuery Mobile 1.3.1, jQuery 1.9.1, and then also the style sheets. You know, you pretty much uh, we will give you all the style sheet that is required. So, sorry about that. So there, there's a preview here that Visual Studio 2012 comes. So when any time you click a um, file, it has to go and then visualize that. So that's what, if you see the structure itself, jQuery mobile, I have the JavaScript, uh, the jQuery mobile JavaScript and the jQuery uh, JavaScript is already embedded. I also have the styles put correctly and we also put what is known as a phone gap or it's now known as Cordova. So we put the Cordova also and here's the index.html. So voila, that's it. Now here's the magic that I'm going to show you now. All we did was file new uh, jQuery mobile project template. That's it, right? I haven't changed anything here in this particular uh, project. Now, you will see that we have something known as Icenium. If you look at the left-hand side of the screen, uh, there is a menu item called Icenium. And then I have something called Run Mobile Project 1 in Simulator. So when I click that, we're going to give you a simulator which is pretty similar like this. So here is, I clicked on that particular uh, you know, option which said run a project one, project in simulator and voila, this is what you get. This is a simulator, you know, uh, basically if you're creating mobile uh, hybrid based mobile application where you use a JavaScript and then HTML and then, uh, you know, the uh, st CSS to style your uh, applications, that's not a hybrid mobile app. So Think about this, if you have been developing with uh, this kind of technology, which is, you know, using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, how did you test your UI? You know, I know for sure before I jumping into this Icenium, uh, you know, uh, product, I used to uh, write it in a notepad or, you know, edit notepad, notepad plus plus or, you know, edit pad or whatever the, the editor that you had, save it come to Chrome or come to Firefox and then say, okay, now resize it to this, resize it to that, and then, you know, you would change the user agent string so that uh, the the rendering engine knows that, hey, this is a mobile browser, and then you would see, oh, this is how it looks in this particular, uh, you know, dimension or all those things. Now, just imagine now, you know, you we, we are giving you the simulator. All, all it does is it simulates. So, all I did was file new project, that's it, I came here, you can see we put in a nice little example to showcase uh, that this is a mobile app with the header, with the footer, and then these are, you know, uh, you know, if you can see here, it says UI interaction example, and there is a, you know, arrow which says, hey, you can click this, so if I click that, did you see that? It went to the next page where, you know, it just says enter your credential, I'm going to enter it as low hit GN, and then say test one, two, three and then say login, well it says welcome Lohit GM, so that's it, so this is a mobile app, you know, we give you all this thing with that, so I can go back and then I can also look at location example, so here we are embedding Google Maps, uh, you know, so what I can say is I am from Bangalore, so I stay at Jainagar, so I can just say Jainagar and then click on it, so you'll see that, wow, it goes, the Google Maps goes and then, uh, you know, kind of points uh, the map to Jainagar where I stay. So this is all happening without writing any code. If you want, you can package this uh, right now and then just put it to Google Play or uh, iOS. Our 
Uh, Icenium allows you to create packages for Google Play and uh, you know iOS uh, out of the box. So without uh, you know going anywhere else, I will show you that. So now just to uh, introduce you to some of the aspects of this particular uh, simulator, take a look at this. On the left hand side, I have something a drop down that I have uh, you know uh, pulled up now. What is this? This shows all the uh, devices that you can simulate as of now. I can simulate iPhone. I can simulate iPhone 5. So iPhone and iPhone 5 is nothing but iPhone is the previous versions of iPhone 5, whereas iPhone 5 is the fifth version. You know whatever uh, they have. So I can just click on that, and then there you go. iPhone 5 is a little bit longer in you know the the height. So you can see that you know there is a change. I can go back to iPhone. So this is the first generation phone. So there you can see the height is different. So we take care of all these things, and then we just uh, allow you to simulate and then write immediately right now as soon as I code I, we allow you to take a feedback as to how this performs on different devices not only devices you can see we support iPhone, iPhone 5, iPad, Android phone, Android tablet as of now but we're going to be adding a lot of things here in this drop down we also provide you with the versions you know if you take iPhone iPhone has a lot of versions you know 4.3, 5.1, 6.0 so you can immediately see hey this how does it run on iPhone 4.3, right? So that's that's what it is. Not only that, we have this capabilities of flipping. You know what? How will my uh, UI look when the user flips the phone, or maybe user changes the orientation? Uh, you know, between 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise, and all those things. As you can see, uh, it, it gives you immediate feedback. Not only that. We also have this capability of debugging. Just imagine if you had to debug what you would do. So here you can see that I am looking at the runtime generated HTML of my app. You know that that's how serious it can get when it comes to debugging. You know I am just looking at all the uh, how it is rendered on the on the on the browser. Not only that, we give you the resources view wherein you can pretty much go into local storage or you know if you are storing something in WebSQL or IndexedDB or local storage. We allow you to pretty much take a look at everything. You know, I, I don't have anything stored as of now, but if you have a functionality where you're storing something in the local storage, you can pretty much come back here and then say, okay, did the data save correctly? Uh, what is it saying? How is it saving? You know, all those things. Plus, let's assume you're, uh, you know, let's go back to this uh, location example. Here you can see it's making a lot of calls to Google API. So th there you go. You can actually do the network sniffing right through the simulator. You know, you do not have to use any any other mechanism. If there is something which is going out of this app uh, to internet, so th th we will be able to show you that particular HTTP call. You can uh, go through and then you know if you double click on any of these guys, uh, it will actually show you the preview of that particular, the headers that are going through, the preview, the response that came back. Everything can be done here. Of course, the sources you can do debugging right from here. You know, you can pretty much put a breakpoint in your JavaScript and then uh, try to debug. We also have the timeline where we show events, frames, memory, everything. The profiles, you know, you can take a look at, you can collect some of the, uh, you know, statistics or the, the debug data and then pretty much take a look at that. Also the console, you know, who can forget the console? So we have everything. So this is what, uh, you know, we're going to be, this is how you develop basically a, a, a application using Visual Studio which targets iPhone or Android phone. Take a look at this. This is an example where uh, the same code is now running in uh, iPhone. So if, I'm sorry, Android. So if I click on UI interaction example, since this is jQuery mobile, you do not see any nativeness in this application, meaning the jQuery mobile makes it look you know, uh, static, meaning it's the same buttons, it's everywhere in all the platforms. So, but it performs the same, like, you know, I can package this and then say, this and then I can come back here and then do this yeah it does the same what if I tell you another goodness that we have that is we have a product called Kendo UI mobile which lets you do the same thing but it's gonna be doing an adaptive rendering so I'm gonna go and say like file new project Icenium and then I'm gonna select Kendo UI mobile so basically uh, we will talk about what exactly is a Kendo UI mobile so now assume I've done uh, I've clicked on OK and then it has created a project so this is how you will look uh, this is how the project will look like we'll put a, a folder called Kendo uh, 
So we have our own JavaScript called Kendo Mobile JavaScript. We also have our own themes. So the CSS so Kendo Mobile uh, dot CSS. And of course, here is how our uh, things uh, come around. So this, that's all I did. I said file new uh, Icenium project template called Kendo UI Mobile Project, and that's it. Now, when I if I go and then say Icenium run this in simulator, I'm going to click on that, and then we will see the simulator here. Now here's the interesting thing that I want to, I want all you, all of you to take a look at it. It's the same IDE. The, the Icenium is our simulator, right? So, but we have used now Kendo UI mobile controls. Okay. Uh, I want you to pay attention to the bottom of the screen in this uh, simulator, the iPhone that you're seeing. This is known as a tab strip. Now, can you see this? It's it's changing the different views of the uh, application when I click on each tab. So this is basically nothing but uh, what we call as tab strip. So this is a Kendo UI mobile control. And then look at the uh, the home, uh, the header of this particular app. It, if some of you are using iPhone, it's very uh, natural for you to un identify that, oh, this is an iPhone app, right? So basically these, uh, the bluish tinge that you get in the header, the button is a blue button, uh, and then you know even in the icons, you will see that there's, it's a blue background. So this is a typical iPhone uh, UI, right? Now, I have not done any code change as of now. I just have done file new Icenium project template, Kendo UI mobile. That's it, right? Now, the same code, when we package and then make it to run on Android, how does it look like, right? So in the simulator, I can actually do that. I can now say, hey, show me how this app looks like in Android. So I'm clicking Android. And you will see that the whole UI got changed automatically to look pretty similar to what Android applications look like you know this is Android's UI but you do not have to do anything that's the magic the Kendo UI mobile controls bring in they are adaptive rendering mobile controls uh, they know where they run meaning they know the platform they're running in so currently we are running in Android so remember the tab strip that was on the bottom now automatically went up I didn't have to write any code that's because this is a Kendo UI mobile control called tab strip and it knows that hey when I am an iPhone I have to be in bottom when I am running on Android I have to be on top so it does the same thing. Look at the button. The button gets changed to look like an Android. So similarly, uh, you click on, uh, you know, different things. So here is what uh, the uh, login screen looks like. You know, I can come back here and then say the same thing. So I can click on login. It will say, hey, welcome, Lohit. So I can log out. I can go back to the same thing. So I will say Bangalore. And then I click on enter button. And then you will see that, you know, the the map is all uh, all interactive so I is and look at this this is a list view uh, meaning this is a control that we have called as list view Kendo UI mobile list view and then look at that the, the UI is now changed to look like an Android list view so this is how an Android shows you any list right but let, let me go back to iPhone again and then we'll go back to the same list take a look at this so this list is pretty much what you see in iPhone but and look at this the tab strip is now in the bottom and the header is a bluish tinge of uh, uh, iPhone but now I can go back to the Android and then you will see that it changes to Android you know Android doesn't have the concept of headers so we don't show it uh, if you want you can force it but we don't we, we uh, you know we work with the UI principles of all the platforms the Kendo UI mobile controls are supporting all the pretty much all the mobile platform that you can know of like you know Windows Phone 8 we have support for Windows Phone 8 meaning you write once you package it and then deploy it on uh, Windows Phone 8 or iPhone or Android or Blackberry they're they're gonna look like native UI you know uh, the look and feel is gonna be like the native look and feel but this is a hybrid application, meaning I use HTML5, uh, HTML5, JavaScript, and then, um, you know, the CSS to style it. So how was this possible, okay? So basically, uh, the whole concept here is of, of this Kendo UI. Uh, so if you can see here, in my code, I have, we need only jQuery, so I have put a, a reference to jQuery. We need Kendo Mobile, so I put a reference to Kendo Mobile. And then we need the CSS, so I have the Kendo Mobile CSS being, uh, you know, uh, referenced here. That's all uh, you require. So, at the heart of everything, we have this concept of, let me close my Solution Explorer. We don't need that anymore. So, I hope uh, you're able to see this. If not, let me increase 
my zoom ratio. So yeah, so at the heart, the Kendo UI relies on only one thing, and that is the layouting concept. You know, we have this concept called layout. So here, all we need is, I want you to just define me the layout of this application. So here, if you can see, I have taken a normal div, and then I, but I said data dash row layout. Okay, so first thing is that, so you define a layout, just give it an ID, uh, and then you need to define me an header. So what, what should be there in the header? So we have a control called navbar. So all it does is it shows that neat little header bar that you saw uh, with the title. So here is a span, and, and, and the role of this span is uh, review title. So our Kendo mobile engine understands all these, uh, you know, um, uh, terminologies like navbar, uh, layout, view title and all those things and then it knows what needs to be done. Similarly, I don't want you to design the whole screen in this layout. Rather, I want you to just tell me what's the header, what's the footer. So in the footer, what I've done is I've kept a div, but I said, hey, I want this to be converted into tab strip control, Kendo UI mobile tab strip control. And then I have four tabs here. You look at this. So this is how you just create the tab. It's as easy as it can get. All I'm doing is an anchor tag and I'm saying notice that the href is actually hash and then a tab strip uh, dash home because the whole Kendo UI uh, t t technology is all about single page application meaning your whole mobile app is basically seen single index.html and then we keep navigating between fragments of uh, HTML so I'll show you that there'll be a div whose ID is tab strip dash home so that's all we define different different uh, tabs here and then data icon is just to make sure that you get an icon on the tab strip itself like you know uh, home contact search globe these are our pre built uh, icons that are already there you don't have to uh, include any images it comes with kendo ui mobile controls so now we have defined our layout now i have a screen for the home right so i need a screen for the home screen so uh, i'll go back and then i'll show you this so this is as easy it can get to create a screen or let's say you are you are having an application so application has one page or one screen so this is how it's easy so div i give it an id id is tab strip dash home this is important i just say data dash role is view so this is the this is a view so we need at least one view to be in this page uh, otherwise uh, we don't know what to do if there's a view we'll pick it up and then we'll just by default show the show it as the first view and then uh, pretty much it's a standard HTML that I put. So let's go back to the home page and then see how how we are how how is the home page look like. So let me go back to iPhone. So this is home page, right? Ah, sorry about that. This is the home page. Let me pick iPhone because it fits my screen. Yeah, so this is the home page. Remember, we defined header, so that's here the home. We defined a footer and then placed the tab strip so that is here at the bottom and then in the div that data dash role is equal to view is where we put the home screen or home view uh, content so that is this content that you're seeing now right so now when I click on login it goes to a different page so let's see how that is done so first of all in the tab strip we have said login right tab strip dash login so that means I need a view with an ID tab strip dash login. So let's take a look at that. Here we go. Again, this is just another div, but the only thing that makes it a view is give it an ID tab strip dash login and then data dash role view. That's all. Of course, we have this concept of MVVM where I can go in and then bring in my, you know, I, I put a JavaScript pattern of, uh, you know, module, uh, you know, repeating the, I've created a module based uh, JavaScript here, meaning I have different, different view models. Uh, I've uh, modularized my core and then that's what, there's an app uh, object which is at the global level. It has a service called login service and that contains a view model. You know, uh, that's a data binding stuff. So here is another thing, in interesting thing. Do you see all this? Uh, neat little things data bind is equal to visible is logged in data bind text is username so we give you out of the box MVVM if you are on the latest and greatest bandwagon of uh, JavaScript programming you will know that gone are the days where you will do like uh, I know in order to read what is entered in a text box pretty pretty much you would do like you know document or get element by ID the text box and then you'll take a value or you're in a Java a jQuery you will say dollar hash the ID of the text box and then dot val. So gone are the days where you have to do that. Why? Because we have 
MEVM frameworks where you can do a data binding. So if you change the code, the UI gets updated. If the user types in the UI, the code gets updated with the whatever value. So that's what we provide you, the data bind. So that's what you're seeing here, the data bind. So if I have to show you how the JavaScript looks like for this, let me go back. Uh, let me open up script and then we'll open up, we'll see the login.js. So I'm using the revealing module pattern here. So what you see here is I have a login view model and I have this properties called is logged in username password and I'm doing what should be done on uh, login. So you, if you can see here is logged on is true, otherwise it's false and on logout what needs to be done and then that's it. Uh, so I'm binding to all those properties, username, is logged in, blah, 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 and then that's it, that's done. And look at this, when you have a button, we allow you to do the data binding on the button too. See here, data bind, click on login. So where is on login? So here is on login method. There you go. So on login. So if the button is click, this is the event handler that will be executed. So all I'm doing is I'm getting the username, I'm getting the password, I'm checking if they are both uh, available there, otherwise I'm alerting, otherwise I set like yes, he's logged in. So look at this, I just set is logged in true and the UI will automatically, you see this invisible is logged in, so based on that, they will either be visible or invisible depending on the value of that particular uh, logged in, but I don't have to write the code where you say uh, dollar get this uh, div or button dot hide or dot show, you don't have to do all those things. So we give you out of the box MEVM, so it is already there, it's a pattern you know that uh, most of the JavaScript uh, applications follow now. So this is how pretty much we have done everything, if you show here we also have this concept of initialization, show, hide and then you know these are the events of a view. This is a view, so when the view is getting initialized, I want to do something, yes, we give you a handle for that, we give you a hook for that, and view is about, is shown, so unshown, uh, unshow, I want to do something, yes, we give you a, a hook for that or the event for that, and view is getting hidden, meaning user has navigated away from my view, so Kendo UI mobile application engine will go and then hide this, and then get the other view into, uh, into focus. So, uh, basically it does a lot of things like this, so we give you all these things. Now your question may be, how did it know that it has to be a Kendo UI mobile application? Well that's a good question, so here it is. All you need to do is, you just have to do this particular uh, line, you know. Uh, if you can see here, I told you app is nothing but a global object, so it's just a variable, it's a JavaScript variable, nothing much. What we are doing is, we go ahead and then say when the device is ready, uh, we go ahead and say, hey, I want a Kendo mobile application, I want you to convert this whole body into a Kendo mobile app. So that's where all the magic happens. Kendo UI mobile engine will go ahead, you know, go through the DOM and then uh, know what needs to be done and then convert everybody into, you know, the, it, it does his magic, you know, it puts his magic dust and then you will get the control, you will get the look and feel, everything is done like this. Now, we introduced a, another interesting theme, so we, uh, we have two capabilities with Kendo UI mobile controls, you know, basically uh, it, it does adaptive rendering, plus it has this uh, flat theme or, you know, those of you who are using iOS 7, you will understand that um, um, iOS or iPhone, Apple introduced the flat theme in iOS 7, but we had this flat look and feel of almost a year ago, so this is what you see. Uh, on all the, you know, if I go to Android phone, you'll still see the same look and feel. Uh, if I say flat, you'll still see the same. So this is what the theme that we have. So uh, basically there are a couple of uh, moving parts here. One is Visual Studio, of course, you already know. Uh, another piece was Icenium. Uh, this is our Visual Studio extension. If you're asking me where, where can I find this, well, you can go to extensions and updates in your Visual Studio and you can go online, of course it's already installed on my system but I will show you how to figure this out, so go to online and say Visual Studio Gallery and then search for Icenium, depending on my uh, you know connection, internet connection, uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to figure this out, yeah there you go, it shows that I already installed but what you can do is you can pretty much go to Visual Studio 2012, Tools, Extensions and Updates, get the Icenium extension for Visual Studio. You can see that it's still in beta stage, uh, uh, but uh, the Icenium extension relies on you to have an Icenium subscription, 
okay so I'm going to talk about that later so this is what it is if you want more information click on the more information it will open up the Visual Studio gallery page where we have hosted this extension so here is the Icenium extension for Visual Studio beta page and you can see that it's uh, supporting only Visual Studio 2012 as of now and pretty much you can do mobile Android iOS Icenium Cordova hybrid you know, all those things so that's about Icenium so I hope uh, I gave you uh, you know what we are talking about so let me go back quickly to my slide deck so this is what it was you know what did we use we use Visual Studio we use Icenium which is our uh, you know extension for Visual Studio and then we use Kendo UI the mobile control set and then we are able to create hybrid and iOS wait but you said uh, it has to be an app right so we just saw something in the simulator but where did we publish this right that's what you may be asking me now so here's here's another interesting thing I want to show you let me close this out so this is our mobile project if you look at the Icenium menu now you will see that there is a second option which says build mobile project 2 in the cloud okay so note that the code is here in your laptop now and I'm running my laptop here in Bangalore so the code is here but when we do this that is build mobile project in uh, or the build this project in cloud what Icenium does is it picks up your code goes to our cloud basically we have Telerik cloud where we have uh, the build mechanisms you know everything so let me click on that you will see that you know it says hey what publishing that you want to do do you want to do an Android package or do you want to do an iOS package now I can just directly go and then say okay now go ahead and then build me an um, Android okay so now we can see that it's building for Android right here from Visual Studio can you imagine that you do not have to go anywhere else so just give me a second uh, depending on my internet it's going to go and then you know put the whole source code to Telerik cloud in the cloud we have you know uh, a couple of things going on it will build the APK and then come down and then say hey do you want to directly download it on the device or do you want to download it here on your laptop you know you may want to do something else with the APK like you know distribute it or before even putting it to the marketplace so it gives you two um, you know capabilities that is it will be there on our servers uh, you can this uh, will give you a QR code and then you can directly just point your device to the QR code and then your device will download the APK and then you can install the APK right from your uh, device or you can download the APK onto your system now so just bear with me for maybe another 30 seconds or so because uh, today I'm on a very low bandwidth uh, internet connection so it's taking a little bit of time or you have to believe me that you know it's going to do the APK so let's give it some time and then let's see if it does because what it does is it puts up a neat little QR code uh, and then says hey otherwise you download manually uh, here's the link so it will download the APK for you let's give it a little bit of time well we'll come back to this um, let's move ahead so this is what it was we used Visual Studio we used Icenium the uh, extension from us uh, from Telerik and then Kendo UI so basically when you use these three you are able to produce you know package for Android package for iOS right from your uh, Visual Studio now let me take maybe five minutes to go over what exactly is Icenium uh, well Icenium is nothing but uh, integrated cloud environment is what we call it's basically uh, you can develop iOS and Android mobile apps within your Visual Studio uh, it comes with the integration you can write once and deploy everywhere meaning you code once using HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, develop mobile applications just give me a second I'll be back Um, in the meantime, um, we'll just uh, launch a quick poll. Uh, sorry for the uh, small uh, hiccup there. I'm just going to launch a poll uh, uh, by the time Lohit is back. So would you please take a second to answer the poll? This will help us uh, tailor the presentation uh, to your liking. So uh, many of you have already voted. Uh, and in case you have any questions, please feel free to add them in the Q&A panel. Uh, 
while our team has been answering those questions, uh, we have a few of them still unanswered. Uh, we're trying uh, our best to make it possible, but uh, in case uh, we are not able to, uh, we'll, we'll also be uh, answering or posting the answers on TellericHelper.net in the coming week. So thank you for, uh, for, for answering the question on experience. Uh, many of you, uh, uh, almost about 50% today in the call uh, are from 5 to 10 years of experience. This is uh, excellent information for us. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, all right, last uh, few seconds uh, so that you can answer. All right, thank you so much uh, for the poll. Um, I have uh, one more uh, question uh, for you. Uh, this is about your uh, mobile development uh, effort. Well, if you're not doing any mobile development, you may want to choose the mobile web uh, development. Okay, last few seconds uh, so that you can uh, take the poll. All right, uh, most of you seem to be from a non-mobile development background, uh, but fear not because uh, all that we are doing today is simply using HTML5 or web technologies uh, and hence reusing all your skills that you currently possess uh, to make a mobile web application. Okay, so that's all I had to ask. Uh, we'll wait for Lohit to come back. And, I'm here. Uh, all right, so please go ahead, Lohit. Thanks, Abhishek. Uh, so I was talking about you know writing once and deploying everywhere. So you basically code once using HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, develop mobile apps for both iOS and Android. Notice that the ID, the Icenium extension is supporting building for iOS and Android out of the box. But the Kendo UI mobile control set, they support pretty much all platforms that you know of. All you need to do is take the same code, maybe let's say BlackBerry uh, or maybe let's say Windows Phone. So Windows Phone has a different packaging mechanism you would need to have a Visual Studio to create uh, a zap file and then uh, you know create the Windows phone structure and then but you can still use the same HTML5 uh, code that you have done and then just package it as a zap and then just put it on the Windows phone marketplace so that's as simple as it can get with uh, Kendo UI mobile control set but talking about Icenium, Icenium can give you all the uh, you know start you have an idea, you want to start uh, coding, uh, you, we will give you the, uh, you know, Visual Studio is already there. But when it comes to testing, debugging, you know, all those things, yeah, Icenium will cover you there with the simulators. We will keep on adding devices in the simulator. We'll keep on adding versions of the, simula the devices. You know, all those things will take care of it. So you can build rich mobile apps with um, powerful... Um, Lohit, uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, but there is nothing on display on the screen. So you've got to oh, show your screen again, again please. Oh, I'm sorry. I think when the poll ran, uh, my display. Can you see my screen now? Not yet, sorry. Okay, let's come out. Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. So uh, you can pretty much build uh, rich mobile apps with powerful backend services too. We have something called as Everlife, which is a backend as a service. So we give you a very simple JavaScript SDK, .NET SDK, whatever you want to do. And uh, this is the uh, backend as a service. So you can do that. We support full Apache Cordova plugin support. So you can pretty much put the plugin, uh, you know, whatever plugins you want, and then you know, start coding. So that's also provided. Let me take briefly uh, something about Kendo UI 2. It's a native UI on every device. You saw that. I showed you, I showed you the live demo. Uh, we support pretty much all the platforms that you can think of, iOS, Android, BlackBerry, Windows Phone 8. Uh, we provide you a mechanism to change the themes. We have a theme builder online, so your UX person can just come in. It need not be the same look and feel. Uh, you know, you can ch just change it to your will and wish. 
we uh, we take care of the kinetic scrolling meaning you know although this is html5 and javascript we'll make sure that the, when somebody scrolls when you use a list view it is as near to scroll as possible so that's the one of the highlights of kendo ui automatic layout system so you do not have to worry we will make sure it fits the available screen um, you just put you just worry about the ux uh, we'll take care of that so all in all Kendo UI is a complete mobile framework. You know, you pretty much you can take care of everything, starting from the widgets to uh, the framework. You know, I have not talked a lot of uh, goodness that Kendo UI mobile comes in, uh, comes with, like the data source, the validation, the uh, you know all those things. Uh, so, but it's a complete mobile framework. So that's pretty much what I had to show in case. Oh yeah, there you go. We had put it for uh, build. If you remember, I had put it for Android packaging. So this is what happens when it finishes the packaging. So it says, hey, scan the QR code or download to install manually. So I can now click on the install link that is here. If I click on the install link, it says, hey, uh, where should I uh, you know, download this Android APK? So I'm going to say, hey, I want you to go ahead and then put it on, uh, you know, on my desktop so it's going to be there so our you see this copy link if you have a uh, android device you can just point it to this qr code it it can uh, read that qr code this qr code is nothing but a link so let me copy that link and then i'll show you this so if you see here i'm going to just resize because it's going to go ahead and then download immediately now so there you go so we have a url for that apk when i click on that Notice that it's trying to download, um, you know, pretty much this particular APK now. It's going to be coming down uh, on my system here. It's going to say, hey, where do I, uh, can you see this? It started downloading the APK and that's all. So similar, I didn't show the iOS packaging because, you know, I don't have an iOS uh, uh, developer profile set up as of now. But if you have your iOS profiling, you know, everything set up, you pretty much just can come in here and then just say, you know, just click on the build and it's going to ask you your profile. So, and that's it. Uh, the certificates, everything needs to be set up and then there you go, you're up and go. So, uh, one other thing I missed was the properties. You know, what if I want to set up some properties for, let's say, Android or iOS because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, deploy this on both iOS and uh, Android. There are certain properties that I would have to set, right? Yeah, we have covered you there too. If you click on properties, now what you see here is a properties window that comes up, uh, pretty similar to what you're used to a Visual Studio project, right? You know, we are all used to right click, the, the if you double click any .NET projects, this is what you see, a bunch of things on the left hand side and then right hand side is where you will start entering all the data. So you can come back here and then modify everything. By default, it follows a, a pattern which is com.telric.mobileproject2, so you can change it to whatever uh, uh, naming convention that you have uh, it says supported interface in orientation so I can say you know what my uh, app supports only portrait my app supports only landscape or it supports both coming to iOS uh, specific uh, properties there are a bunch of things that you can set up on uh, iOS there you there you go you can say the status bar style has to be like this you know um, pretty much what are the device families it supports like you know is it iPhone iPad iPod touch or iPad you know like that then background mode um, you know how, how I want my background modes to be when it comes to Android so you can pretty much say uh, all the permissions you can set up so this is what one thing that I, I, I like it like you know otherwise you will be setting all the permission in an XML file you will go uh, manually change the nodes if there is any one small mistake in a node the way you have uh, pasted a node or typed a node you know it's pretty much what happens is you know it, take, it takes a lot of time to figure out what exactly happened the build may fail so here it's all manual let's say I want to remove camera permission so I just have to click on that uh, delete button the, 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 the icon trash icon that's it it's gone and I just have to save my project let's say I want to add another uh, permission so just click on the add button and then there you go it knows what are the permission not uh, it's not already uh, available and then it just allows you to click on that and then say okay so the camera will come back so this is as easy as it can get to work with the properties of uh, you know um, uh, Icenium so that pretty much wraps up like you know what I had in mind for today's uh, thing so if you liked what you saw today uh, we want you to come back to us talk to us uh, if there is any team which is working on hybrid apps and then, then you want to uh, kind of uh, 
kind of pilot this Icenium uh, for your team, feel free to contact us. Uh, I'm going to be showing my uh, email ID in a second. So these are some of the resources. You can go to Icenium.com to know more about Icenium. Uh, you can go to this short URL where we have bunch of samples which showcase I uh, you know ICNEM, Kendo UI Mobile, jQuery Mobile, Cordova, everything. So it's jnlme dot uh, uh, slash ICNEM samples. And then of course, if you want to know more about Kendo UI Mobile Control Set, you can go to kendoui.com. If you want to know more about Kendo UI in terms of like you now video, so this is the YouTube channel that we have, uh, youtube.com slash user slash Kendo UI TV, and uh, that's pretty much uh, what I had in mind. So I'm going to now keep this uh, slide, which is about uh, my, you know, uh, contact. It's uh, Lohit dot Nagaraj at dot com. My Twitter ID is kshyapa. I would request if you have anything to do with uh, ICNEM or Kendo UI, please drop me an email on my official email ID. Uh, I'll be able to uh, answer you or hook you up with a uh, concerned person. If you have any sales enquiries, you can directly write to sales at telericindia.com. So that's uh, an email which directly goes to our account manager and then she will be able to follow it up. Uh, so pretty much that's about Icenium, Visual Studio, Icenium and then Kendo UI mobile control. So now I'm going to be jumping to, uh, you know, the Question and answers. I believe my team has been doing a wonderful job. I know going through the questions. I I I don't know how many questions are there. So we'll try to. It's 3:53. Uh, if somebody has to leave by four, you know, you pretty much uh, we are okay. Like you know, we understand your time concern, and then uh, you know you can pretty much uh, leave. But we will be here for maybe another five ten more minutes. We'll try to answer as and when. Uh, I mean, as much as we can. So I'm going to start from the bottom most and then try to answer one by one. Uh, Abhishek, if there's any specific thing that I need to, uh, you know, p kind of pick it up, so just let me know, stop me anytime and then I'll try to uh, answer that. Yeah. Sure. Um, actually, there is uh, one question which refers to showing uh, a few controls that may be available sure. in Icenium. So I think one or two controls that you can show them. Yeah, uh, that's a good uh, thing. I think I missed that. So basically, Icenium uh, is actually an IDE, or it's it's more about you know providing you the simulator, providing you the build mechanism, and all those things. It's we call it as integrated cloud environment. That's what I stands for. But the controls are part of Kendo UI Mobile. So you just have to go to kendoui.com, and once you go to kendoui.com. Uh, you will see that we have a uh, different classification within uh, uh, Kendo UI. Kendo UI is, 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 is uh, three things. One is web, mobile, and then database. So let me hide my go to meeting thing. So now if I go to Kendo UI mobile, we will see demos. So in the demos, you can just click on Kendo UI mobile demos. And this is where we have showcased all the controls that we have as part of Kendo UI mobile framework. So here you can see on the top left hand corner it says mobile widgets, uh, action sheet, button, button group, dryer, list view, model view, navbar, popover, scroller, scroll view, switch, tab strip. These are the widgets that we have. For example, if you can see here, I'm currently looking at our widgets which is uh, action sheet or this is the list view. I, I'm, I'm going to show a list view widget. So here you go. So this is the list view widget, and on the top you can see that we have simulators even on the web, uh, you know, on the web demo. So you can pretty much take a look at, hey, if this list view is rendered or running on an Android, how does it look like? If it is running on BlackBerry, how does it look like? If it is running on Windows Phone 8, how does it look like? You know, if you can see here, this what you write once, it's going to be running on all the platforms. Plus, we also have this flat theme. And on the left hand side, we will give you a lot of, uh, uh, you know, I call it as uh, demo scenarios. So in the list view, this is the basic usage. You can see the code here. In the bottom itself, we show you the code, how, what is the code used to uh, do this demo. Once you download a trial of Kendo UI Mobile, you will get all the demos uh, with you on your laptop or desktop, so wherever you install it. So you can pretty much play around here. Uh, you can click on any, um, you know, for example, in in let's let me show you a split view. You know, this is one of the controls that is there for Android. I'm mean, sorry, the tablets. You know, if you have if you are uh, targeting both phone as well as a tablet, you can pretty much play around with two layouts. 
the layout that I showed you was for the phone, but you can go ahead and then say, hey, I want to create one more layout and this layout should be applied only when it runs in iPad or Android tablets. You know, that's what pretty much is. So this is how it looks going to look like. So on an iP iPad, this is the UI. On an Android tablet, this is the UI. So there you can, there you go. So it's just only one control, but it, it, it adapts. Otherwise, you can go back and then say, no, I don't want uh, adaptive rendering. Rather, I want a simple, uh, you know, flat theme. We call it as flat theme. So you can just click on beverages. It goes and then gets this. And then you know, on the right-hand side, you can see products, orders. There you go. You can, uh, the possibilities are endless. So these are some of the controls. I would say go to demos.kendoui.com slash mobile. And you can pretty much see all our mobile controls that you have. So let me open up my Q&A panel. Uh, Venu Moguram, you're asking, how can I get this app into my Android? Uh, I showed you, uh, you know, it generates an APK file. You can either put it to the marketplace and then, um, you know, somebody will go to the marketplace and then they will uh, search for it and then download it. Or you can take the APK, give it to your friends or whatever, and then they will be able to put it onto uh, their, uh, you know, uh, through a, um, what do you call the, put it on the device itself and then use a installer and then just install it. So those are the two ways you can pretty much uh, do it. What is the time frame for getting Icenium for Windows? Yeah, we at the moment are not sure. Uh, the team is uh, going to be looking at that maybe soon. or uh, We don't know that. We don't have any clarity on that yet. But uh, we will try to see what can be done. Uh, Ravi Tyagi was asking for how can we register a developed application in a Google Play? Well, it's out of the scope of this webinar. But I think you just have to go create a developer account and that's it. And then you do upload your APK file. Uh, what is the part of ASP.NET MVC in Kendo UI? Uh, well, we have web control, so we have Kendo UI web, so that's where ASP.NET MVC comes into picture. So on a technology called ASP.NET MVC, you can use Kendo UI mobile, uh, web controls, and we have controls like grid, you know, uh, all the, we have around 25 controls for web. Uh, Ivan Pankras, you're asking for on which Visual Studio model will you be trying on? So basically, this is the full SKU, or we call it as, you know, uh, full SKU of Visual Studio 2012. Yeah, it can be any Visual Studio 2012, but it has to be the full SKU. Ajay Negi, you're asking for, we have to write all the codes in one single page, like index.html, or can we use some other pages? We, we allow you two things. One is you can pretty much keep it in one index.html, or you can go ahead and then create a folder called views, and then, uh, you know, you can create different views. But the index.html should contain at least one view, and then you can pretty much, uh, you know, have the other views in uh, uh, in a different folder, different HTMLs, and then you can, when you... Uh, provide reference to links to that uh, views you can just uh, use normal you know view slash uh, second dot html or third dot html instead of have putting the hash and then an id yeah you can uh, use two different uh, uh, you know views uh, Nilesh Patil, you're asking for what are the server side wrappers for kendo mobile ui yeah we do also have uh, kendo ui mobile wrappers for asp.net mvc so that will not be a mobile application, rather it will be a mobile application. So for example, in ASP.NET MVC, it is easy for you to create a standalone, I mean, it's easy to create a desktop uh, view, right? You know, you just say index.cshtml, so that's going to be rendered when a request is coming from a desktop browser. Uh, ASP.NET MVC allows you to create a page by name, by a convention like index.mobile.cshtml. So if somebody is browsing your web page from a mobile browser, uh, ASP.NET MVC will automatically serve that particular index.mobile page. So in those scenarios, you can use our server wrappers. Instead of writing this many uh, codes, you can pretty much use uh, our wrappers, uh, like you know HTML.kendo.listview, and then say, here is the data source that you should take, here is the template that you should do, and then it will automatically write the uh, you know HTML for you. So that's the Kendo UI wrappers for you. Uh, Ankur Gupta, you're asking, instead of using emulators, can we test the app on real mobile without submitting it to store? Yeah, you can pretty much take the APK file, put it on the, uh, you know, uh, on the device and then check it out. So if you use 
ICNEMs, uh, you know, we also have something known as ICNEM Windows Client. So let's say you don't want to do it within the Visual Studio. Rather, uh, we also have our own Windows Client for ICNEM. So I can show you quickly uh, what the Windows Client looks like. Uh, so there we allow you to um, pretty much uh, put any device onto your laptop and then ICNEM Windows client uh, will be able to detect that there is a device, um, you know, detect that device has been attached to your laptop and it can pretty much uh, take that. Uh, Jais Matthews, you're asking for any offers for partner companies for ICNEM. I request you to either drop me an email or you can send an email to sales at telricindia.com, please. Rahul Kumar, you have to understand that, you know, your, your question is, I have a backend classes built in C-sharp, then how easy it is to build a UI in ICNEM and utilize these classes or business logic. The model of uh, web, up, the model of mobile application that I showed you is known as hybrid, wherein you will use only HTML5 as your front end, JavaScript as your business logic, and then CSS as your, as styling. So, uh, so if you have a C sharp, then you would have to keep that in the server side and then expose a API, maybe a web API or a WCF uh, REST API, and then utilize that in JavaScript uh, uh, and then, you know, read data from your service in JavaScript and then bind it to your UI. So that's how mobile, uh, hybrid mobile apps work. Shivendra Sharma, you're asking, is there any third-party tool to use it on Visual Studio? Uh, this is an extension that we have written for Visual Studio. Uh, let me show our Icenium. So this is, now if you see my screen, uh, I'm showing you Icenium. I can pretty much uh, open up any demo apps. Let me take a demo app. So I'm taking a data visualizer. So this is Icenium as a client, as a Windows client. So we, we ship so, you know differently like one is a Visual Studio extension if you don't want to use any other client but this is a full-fledged IDE for hybrid mobile application development we call it as graphite so this is a uh, you know a Windows uh, client so it, it provides you the same thing if you can see here you know I have the index.html I can open up the index.html we also give you drag and drop uh, uh, designing feature here let me show the drag and drop designing feature it's uh, loading my page now. I mean, it's loading the code. So nothing is on my system. It's all on my cloud. So so this is completely different. When we do the Icenium extension for Visual Studio, your source code is with you. That is on your system. Um, but when you do with Icenium Graphite, it will be on our cloud. So there's nothing on, on the laptop where you're using Icenium Graphite. This is all coming from the cloud but I can do the designer aspect of it. So as you can see here, I can open up the page in a designer and pretty much, uh, you know, design it like anything. So you can see like, uh, it is still go undergoing iterations, but you, you get the, uh, you know, uh, aspect of, okay, what, what all things we can support you. Plus it has the same things, you know, I can run, I can run in simulator, I can run, I can do the build, build and deploy. Uh, we have the version control, uh, we have the publishing, the same publishing mechanism that you see here. And then this is something that we uh, say, which is known as live syncing. That is, if you have any device attached to your laptops or desktop, ICNM Graphite, which is the Windows client, will be able to detect that there is a device and then show that, hey, I found a device. And then you can actually run your application directly onto the device. Rather than running in simulator, you can push your code right complete uh, right onto the uh, device so and then you have the live feedback on how is it running on uh, you know the device so that's what uh, graphite brings in uh, the windows client uh, will bring in so now let me take a look at other questions as I said, if you guys have uh, want to know more about this you can always write back to us uh, my email ID is uh, flashed here uh, it's on the screen now and then or you can write to sales at telricindia.com so we'll be able to um, help you out. Uh, Jaish Matthews, you're asking for TFS is supported for team development and ACNM. If you want to go the TFS route, you would have to use our extension for Visual Studio because ICNM Graphite that I showed you, which is the uh, um, uh, Windows client, uh, does not support, uh, as of now, the integration point is only GitHub or Bitbucket. But if you are looking for TFS as a source control, you can always use our extension, which is easy. So you can pretty much 
put the extension, um, have your Visual Studio, have the code in TFS, and then there you go. You have still have the same capability, uh, you know, uh, with your Visual Studio uh, environment. Uh, Rahul Kumar, you are asking, is version control for cloud only or works in offline mode as well, like Git? Uh, we we would need internet connection if you are going on the graphite way, that is the Windows client way. Otherwise, if it is a Visual Studio Plus ICNM extension on Visual Studio, it, it's there on your system. So you can pretty much uh, use it. Rohit Reddy, you're saying you're asking for can we integrate APIs? Absolutely. If there is a JavaScript API that is there, you just drag and drop the JavaScript API, start using it. That that's as simple as it can get. Uh, Sarvanan K, uh, if you're uh, interested about licensing and pricing, pricing, you know you can always go to icenium.com or kendoui.com. Um, they both have pricing pricing put up on the page, so there's nothing to hide. So you can take a look at it. If you need more information, please get in touch with us. Uh, my email ID is flashed here. You can also use sales at tellericindia.com. Uh, Deepthi Maya Patra, you're asking how is Icenium Kendo UI different from PhoneGap? Again, I want to uh, kind of uh, clear this, uh, you know, um, you know, big uh, kind of myth that everybody has. PhoneGap is not UI. Uh, PhoneGap is just a JavaScript library which uh, uh, brings you the hardware capability into your JavaScript. That's it. But Kendo UI or Icenium, Icenium is the IDE. It gives you the complete integrated development environment for developing hybrid mobile apps, you know, starting from coding to testing to simulating, we give you through the ICNEM. Kendo UI is the adaptive rendering HTML5 powered, um, you know, uh, control set. So PhoneGap is not a UI, whereas Kendo UI is the UI. So that's the difference. And we work with PhoneGap, you know, um, in order to do the APK or uh, the APA files, we need the uh, APA files, we need the PhoneGap. So PhoneGap is there on our cloud. So we go back there and then we, we develop it. Shivendra Sharma, you're asking, can we use GitHub for version control? Absolutely, you can just uh, have your uh, code in GitHub, and then you come back here and then say, hey, I want you to pull the code from GitHub. Yes, it will be able to do it. The, the graphite version will be able to do it, not the extension in Visual Studio. Uh, Anu Kumar, you're asking, how can we install Icenium in Visual Studio 2012 as a VS extension? Well, I showed uh, in the beginning. So all you need to do is go to Visual Studio and select tools and go to extensions and updates and there you just have to go online Visual Studio Gallery and search for Icenium and then you will be able to get this remember Icenium is a subscription based you will be able to uh, kind of uh, do the development do the simulation everything but you will not be able to build it uh, build the APK or the IPA file until and unless you have a subscription. So it's as like you can just download the extension. It is free. You can uh, start playing around, uh, use the Kendo UI mobile and everything, and then jQuery mobile, create apps. But you will not be able to build until and unless you buy the ICNM subscription. Mickey Roy, you're asking, can jQuery be used in place of JavaScript? Absolutely. The whole Kendo UI is built on jQuery. The whole code that I have written is based on jQuery. So jQuery is a uh, library that you can put in, put in, not only jQuery, any library that you want. Uh, Shanmugamsi, you're saying uh, you have a web app developed in Kendo UI, ASP.NET server side wrappers. Uh, if the the web app is developed using Kendo UI web controls, uh, I would suggest, uh, you know, it, it doesn't work well on a mobile. Uh, so you should pretty much design completely different screen using Kendo UI mobile controls because there are two different uh, you know control sets, mind you, because a desktop browser has a lot many HTML5 support, whereas compared to a mobile browser, of course nowadays uh, pretty much most of the uh, the uh, phones, the devices that are coming up, they have pretty good support for the HTML5 in their browsers. But we would say like you know Kendo UI mobile is for mobile uh, platform, Kendo UI web is for the desktop platform link, the browser, the desktop browser. Charanjit, you're asking, um, 
can we see this webinar again yes we will be, we are recording this webinar i will be uploading the uh, you know the recording uh, most probably by monday or tuesday you will be able to see a blog post on telerichelper.net and uh, you should be able to uh, you know, go through this uh, webinar video again Deepak Gawande, you're asking for, can we build APK in one month free subscription? Yes, you can, of course. Uh, you can do whatever you want in that one month free trial, and then, you know, it, it's yours. Uh, Deepthi Maya Patra, you're asking for any demo videos for ICNM are available somewhere. Yes, you can go to ICNM.com and go to resources section. There are some videos which showcase how to do all these things. Well, it's 4.11. Um, I have time. I will be here. So uh, if anybody has to leave, please, by all means, uh, I, we respect your time. So please go ahead. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to leave the, cha uh, the question and answer window as is. Uh, you keep putting all your questions. I'm going to uh, close down the webinar at 4.15 uh, when it is in my watch. So it's uh, 4.12 by my watch now. Uh, I will give it three more minutes and uh, we want to thank each one of you who made it to the webinar thank you very much hope your one hour was well spent uh, we just wanted to introduce you you know the cool things that we are building and uh, this is a revolutionary thing that we have like with Visual Studio you can build apps for iOS and then um, Android so that's a new thing for me too so I'm pretty excited to work on ICNM and Kendo UI so if you need more information my email is here. You can always write to sales at telericindia.com and we will be able to answer you. We have a dedicated account manager who can follow up with you. You need a demo or you need a uh, you know one hour of uh, uh, you know uh, one hour time with us. We will be there. We'll be able to talk to you guys. So please make use of our uh, you know contacts and then we we would love to hear back from you. So um, thank you very much and have a good weekend ahead.